music. Still French. All right, y'all. So it's time. Let's talk. Let's talk Outriders, man. Let's let's do a review on this game. We got three major categories. We got story, gameplay, and value. We're gonna start with story, and then we'll emphasize on gameplay and value. But a lot of this kind of bleeds together, and then we'll do we'll do a wrap on it at the end. So for me, story on this game, as a whole, World Slayer included, gets an 8 out of 10 for me. Only with World Slayer included. If you take World Slayer away, that easily drops down to like a 6.5, maybe 7. But closer to the 6.5. <laughs> now let's talk about the good before we bash it so much now it got the 8 out of 10 because a lot of games these days don't deliver proper stories it starts and the end makes no sense you play through a whole lot of nonsense you fight things and it you never really get it you're like okay i did some stuff but i don't know why <laughs> i didn't feel like that with this game after playing world slayer i will say that the base game having yagic as the final boss it made no sense to me it was like yeah let's fight this dude he looks bad he looked tough but it didn't actually make any sense at having yagic as a final boss it to me it almost seems like world slayer was probably part of the original game and then maybe this was parceled out to the consumer maybe i can't say that for a fact and i have absolutely nothing to back that up i'm just speaking on how i felt with it as an experience because yagic did not he he just did not make sense as a as a final boss the fight i thought was a little bit cheesy with the orbs uh but i do respect it in the sense of it being a challenge i respect that piece of it but i thought the orbs was i thought i just thought it was cheesy i don't really have any other explanation for it <laughs> um and you never really felt like you solved anything when you beat yagic you're like yeah i beat i beat the tough dude but you didn't really feel like you solved anything with world slayer then you felt like you solved it right you felt like you you connected the dots and everything was everything so that was uh that was that was nice so solid and, and they even brought back from the first half shira had a role to play in world slayer which is again why i say i think maybe world slayer was part of the original game maybe it was the original ending i don't know but it made the way World Slayer ended made a lot more sense. So, and th and the story was it was decently entertaining at least. Again, this ended with World Slayer. If you didn't play the World Slayer content, you probably listen to me right now. Like, no, it's nowhere near that high. Which I would agree with if you didn't. Now let's get to the gameplay gameplay for me I gave it a 7 out of 10 if it were not for world slayer 6.5 out of 10 that's right if it were not for world slayer 6.5 out of 10 let's talk about why so this game it is meant now again i played this i played the whole thing through as single player i didn't do any multiplayer on this game in fact 
uh that's that's a small fib i tried multiplayer the uh match the matchmaking multiplayer within outriders and it did pair me up with somebody who wasn't too far apart from me in level but the part about them you know being similar to where you are in the story that wasn't quite accurate and that's a hard thing to do anyway because the other i was further ahead than this dude was so i ended up piecing out to go do more of the story but this guy could have been hanging out and playing a bunch of side missions at the beginning of the game i didn't really do many side missions because again it was kind of like what am i doing here um so i wasn't necessarily understanding the the goal of the, of the chat the you know intention of the challenge to be the main draw and outside of the ability to turn on auto difficulty scaling or auto world tier scaling on other than the ability to turn that on there's nothing that really pointed me in that direction i happened to get lucky because i was streaming it on twitch and uh a nice fellow swung by and let me know <laughs> that you that's how you get more fun out of the game prior to that it was confusing to me because the maps in the first half of the game were absolutely terrible in my opinion because sure if i wanted to just you know casually get through the game and not really run into much of a challenge sure i could hide behind this cover run over here and just hide behind cover the whole time and keep shooting and trying until eventually everything is dead but if i wanted to get more challenge out of the game and crank up that difficulty what i found was things were coming at me from every which in way in possible direction which isn't a bad thing if you can move the maps made it so clunky on what already wasn't like the super greatest mobility uh for a game like this the maps i felt a lot of times were just in the way like <laughs> like i need to get over here this thing is just in the way like a random rock on the ground is stopping you from moving into what feels like a completely different direction or this randomly placed crate that is here for cover is just blocking me from putting distance between me and this giant creature that's trying to eat me like it felt really clunky in certain areas like that now when you get towards the outriders or the world slayer end of it it got much better the maps opened up just a little bit more i could now weave between things if i wanted to use it for cover as an option and not as a necessity or a hindrance and now i can really get into the feel of where the where the boss is i can look around i see the enemies coming at me right i have the ability to react the maps for the world slayer piece were much i i just had much more mobility much more ability to move and that's what you want in a game like this you crank that difficulty all the way up to the max you're gonna have to run for your life a few times and having room to do so uh it i don't know it's comforting <laughs> but so again, I played this through, I played the whole thing through a single player. So I thought the difficulty, I thought it was good. Uh, a lot of games are actually, I find super easy compared to certain situations in Outriders. Now, does the difficulty scale correctly when you're in a multiplayer setting? I can't speak to that because I, again, I didn't spend any time into any time with the multiplayer, but the shooting outside of the beta, uh, during the beta, I did use multiplayer with a friend for like one or two missions just to ensure that the crossplay they were advertising worked, and it did for me during beta. I did get kicked once or twice, but uh, for the most part, I was able to give that a try during during the beta. But the shooting I felt was actually pretty nice, which was needed. Um, 
some of the weapon choices, I was like, eh, I don't know. But the shooting itself, I thought was it was fairly smooth for a game like this. And that's what you want. That's what saved it for me in a lot of situations. I thought the abilities were good too. But then sort of, again, where it hits the downside for me, there's so much sweet and sour with this game because the the weapons came with these attributes that were just amazing. And the crafting design, I thought, was also amazing. But then it was completely limited. If I did all this work and I got a great weapon to drop and two or three out of the or sometimes three but two out of the three attributes that this weapon has are completely useless to my play style and i can only mod one of them i'm essentially accepting that i'm gonna have one thing on here that's completely useless to me and so that's why I thought it was bad. It was like you give me all these options and then you cut my <laughs> then you take my legs from under me. Like that's I, maybe there was some question about what it, you know, scalability with that kind of thing, but I I don't know. If you're going to put if you're going to put it there, let me use it till its full potential. Don't tell me I can assign all these attributes and then just start locking stuff. That was that to me I thought was not a good idea. Uh, <laughs> sorry, that was a little bit of a rant. Uh, but that's, I mean, that, that comes with the territory. But I thought my, I thought my character abilities were good. I played a little bit of Devastator, uh, during the beta. And then for my primary playthrough on this game, I did Pyro. So if you had a class that you thought was just completely useless, feel free to leave it down in the comment section and let me know. Because I do plan to go back and try out a couple more classes on this game. When I beat World Slayer, I kicked off one of the trials because that's what they have now. They did make a change to how the end game content was and they have the trials now. And so I did kick off one of the trials. Uh, but after playing through all of World Slayer for like, I don't know, a couple hours before that, I didn't really... Uh, have enough energy to go through a trial so i will be going back and doing some more trials at some point but there is an end game to it and so again let me know if there's a class that you think i should try and when i do pick the game back up i will definitely give a shot so now we get to our last our last ranking strategy if you will and that is value uh average again uh seven pretty pretty average it i caught this game on sales so if i had paid maybe full price i would feel a little indifferent about that piece that i said as far as world slayer seeming like it should have been part of the original game I probably feel different about that but because i caught this game on sales i for the game for the base game plus world slayer i probably didn't pay more than 55 60 bucks just because i caught both items on a sale i caught the world slayer piece on the last holiday sale so i believe that was like 19.99 or something like that so i got that on the cheap and so value for me gets it gets an average especially a lot of games now have you know game as a service tied into it and just a ton of in your face uh marketing and you know pay for power stuff and this game didn't do any of that so it i i gave it i felt what it deserved there now i think monster hunter kind of put everybody in a little bit of a pinch with the amount of free content that you got to go along with monster hunter which is you know how games used to care about their consumers they don't anymore but that's a story for another day uh, but that made it pretty difficult for i think uh, any game that came out uh in the couple surrounding years rather prior or, or post so that's what i got for you guys and we can add those together and take an eight 
a seven and a seven and get ourselves a nice little 7.5 out of 10 is what Outriders gets for me. Let me know if you think that my rating on this game is outrageous in one direction or the other. Let me know if you agree with some of the points that I tried to draw out here in this video. Or if you never played the game and you go and pick it up, well, let, me, let me know if you're planning on doing that as well. I Again, if it were me, uh, speaking as someone who just played through it, it is a pretty decent game. But if I could catch it on another sale, I definitely would. All right, and there we have it for Outriders. So let's talk upcoming. Coming up on the channel, I do have the final showdown with the World Slayer boss from Outriders coming up. So be looking out for that. And following Outriders, I will be taking a quick ride down Gotham Knight Lane. I did pick up Gotham Knights when it was on sale for the uh, most recent holiday sale. And so I got that game at a discount as well. Say, hey, folks, if you see a game out there that's supposed to be a primary title and it's for sale and you have the chance to get it for sale and you don't get it for sale, you stupid. No, I'm just playing. <laughs> but uh, I, I did go ahead and pick up Gotham Knights on a sale. And so I will be playing that. Of course, there'll be some gameplay coming up on the channel. I am streaming it over on Twitch every now and then. I have absolutely no con, uh, consistent schedule for my streaming on Twitch. It is completely random and totally based on my availability for the night. <laughs> But I'm out of here, y'all. I'll catch you next time. Deuces. Peace. Hear that music?